Hi, and welcome back for another castle video. So much like the last castle we talked about, Tower of London, today's castle has had many faces over its long history. Today we'll be talking about Leeds Castle in Kent, England. If you've never heard of it, it has been called the loveliest castle in the world. And that name has never fit a castle so perfectly. Of all the castles I've seen, this is likely the most beautiful. It's situated on two islands on a lake within the countryside, lending an amazing, picturesque view. I first learned about this castle, as well as several others, while watching a show called Great British Castles. It used to be on Netflix, but I think maybe only one season is now, if it's on there at all. But if it is still on there, you should definitely check it out. The show has some great information, and it is a great opportunity to see the castles, especially the insides, and learn bits of the most interesting parts of the history. So let's talk about Leeds Castle. The site was first owned by a Saxon chief named Led or Ledian, I've seen it both ways, in 857 who originally built a wooden structure on the two islands in the middle of the river Len. The castle was rebuilt as a simple stone stronghold built by Robert de Crevesior in 1119. During this time, it served as a military post during the Norman invasions into England. The castle was then passed down through the family until 1278 when, after some financial trouble with the current owner, William de Leyburn, the castle was acquired by Queen Eleanor of Castile in exchange for forgiveness of his debts. Now that the castle was in the hands of royalty, it was time to make some major improvements. Shortly after the property was acquired, a few things were done. First, the 10 meter high curtain wall was constructed and included the D-shaped towers along its length. Second, the outer gatehouse was rebuilt. A barbican was also added with the intention of protecting the castle's mill. Most notably, however, was the reworking of the keep into a residence fit for royalty. It became known as the Gloriette and was said to reflect Queen Eleanor and King Edward I's shared love of romance and fantasy. The castle was passed down to Edward I after Queen Eleanor's death in 1290, and he would go on to give it to his new wife, Queen Margaret of France. She would hold on to it until her death in 1318. The castle then reverted back to the crown for a short time until Edward II, instead of giving it to his wife, he instead gave it to his royal steward, Bartholomew de Battlesmere. This turned out to be a silly mistake, as in 1321, Queen Isabella showed up to the castle looking for a place to stay. When she was not only turned away, she was fired at by the archers by... Bartholomew's wife, who was still at the castle. Edward II, of course, did not take kindly to this and successfully besieged the castle on October 31st, 1321. Queen Isabella, however, still didn't get the castle, although she really wanted it. This led to her planning a coup in which Edward II was overthrown by Roger Mortimer in 1325. This was short-lived, however, as Edward II's son, Edward III, deposed Mortimer and became king in 1330. While Mortimer was eventually executed for his treachery, Isabella's relationship with him and her role in the coup and likely murder of Edward II were kept under wraps. This was short-lived, however, as Edward II's son, Edward III, deposed Mortimer and became king in 1330. While Mortimer was eventually executed for his treachery, Isabella's relationship with him and role in the coup and likely murder of Edward II were kept under wraps. She lived out her days in relative comfort until 1958. Edward III, after his mother's death, renovated the Gloriette, built an outer gate, two portcullises, and a new drawbridge adding to the grandeur and strength of the castle. After Edward III came Richard II. By this time, the custom of the castle being granted to the queen was all but tradition, so Richard II gave leads to his wife, Queen Anne of Bohemia. The tradition continued with Richard II's successor, 
King Henry IV. He granted Leeds Castle to his second wife, Joan of Navarre, in 1403. This marriage caused some strife due to English anti-French sentiments. So, after Henry IV's death in 1413, during the reign of her stepson, Henry V, Joan was accused of witchcraft and was imprisoned at the castle. Luckily, she was later released and retired to Nottingham Castle. This allowed Henry V to once again continue the tradition by granting Leeds Castle to his wife, Catherine de Valois. She held the castle until her death in 1437. Here, the tradition of the Queens of England holding the castle ends. The next major changes to the castle occurred under the ownership of King Henry VIII. He transformed the castle from the fortified stronghold that it was to the Grand Royal Palace that it is today. He started the major renovation in 1517 and continued for six years until 1523. During the renovation, an upper level was added and the apartments throughout the building were renovated. Also during this overhaul, the square tower, known today as the Maiden's Tower, was built. On May 22, 1520, King Henry VIII and his first wife, for whom he'd undertaken the renovations for, Queen Catherine of Aragon, partook in perhaps the most well-documented royal visit at the castle. They were on their way to meet their rival, Francis I of France, for a grand festival that was to be held near Calais, which came to be known as the Field of Cloth of Gold. For 18 days beginning June 7, 1520, the two kingdoms were partaking in feasts, tournaments of jousting and combat, masquerades, and religious services. These events were among a sea of tents and banquet houses, lending the name Field of Cloth of Gold. A painting commemorating the events hangs at Leeds Castle, with the original painting hanging at Hampton Court Palace, where the event took place. Leeds Castle remained in royal hands until 1552, when Edward VI granted the castle to a valued soldier, Anthony St. Ledger. It remained in his family until Warham St. Ledger sold it in 1618 to Sir Richard Smith. Sir Richard Smith would undertake at least one large renovation in the 20 or so years his family would own it. He ordered that all of the buildings on the north end of the larger island that were still standing be demolished to make way for a large Jacobian-style house. In 1632, his family sold the castle to Sir Thomas Culpepper. Thomas's son, Cheney, supported the Parliament during the time of the English Civil War, so while a lot of places were devastated during this time, luckily the castle remained unharmed due to him supporting the Parliament. In 1660, the castle was sold to his cousin, a large Virginian landowner by the name of Thomas Culpepper. During this time, he leased the castle to the government. They used the castle to detain Dutch prisoners of war, and this proved detrimental to the castle as the prisoners set fire to where they were being held in 1665, and thus the long-surviving Gloriette was all but destroyed. In 1690, the castle was granted to Thomas Fairfax by way of marriage to Catherine Culpepper. With this marriage, he also gained the huge amount of land owned by the family in Virginia and so, in 1745, he immigrated to the colonies, leaving Leeds Castle in the care of Robert Fairfax. During Robert's time, he spent a large sum of money on renovations, as King George III would come to stay one night in 1778. He actually renovated the reception rooms specifically for this stay. Other changes he made included mapping and landscaping the grounds, and he had a Gothic-style facade, added to the Jacobian house. These vast improvements, however, ended up bankrupting him and he died poor in 1793. Leeds Castle made its way through several owners after this before finally landing with Phineas Wycombe Martin in 1821 who inherited the castle from his kinsman, George Martin. The first thing he did was hire an architect, William Basket, to survey the property to see what needed to be done. He found several alarming things that needed repair. The mill and Barbican were in ruins, and the gatehouse and inner gatehouse were just one step above that. The Maiden's Tower was near collapse. The Jacobian house was a travesty. 
And finally, the Gloriette had still not been repaired when it was all but gutted from that fire in 1665. Renovations between 1822 and 1823 resulted in the new castle and what we see today. The Gloriette was finally repaired, the moat was cleared and cleaned, and the main house, which was built in the Jacobian style and was in disrepair, was even demolished to make way for a new house in the Tudor style, and that is what remains today. In 1895, the Martins acquired more land, making Leeds Castle one of the largest private estates in all of Kent. In 1926, the family was finally forced to sell the castle due to mounting debts. Leeds Castle was then sold to the last private owner, Mrs. Olive Wilson Filmer, later known as Lady Bailey. She was a wealthy Anglo-American heiress who was in the market for a nice country retreat, and she found that in picturesque Leeds. Lady Bailey, born Olive Paget, is interesting in her own right. She was born to an American heiress and a future baron in the United States. Upon her mother's death in 1916, her and her sister were awarded a huge inheritance of $4 million to split between themselves. She then went on to study in France in 1918, and during World War I, she even spent some time as a wartime nurse. After this, she was briefly married between July 21, 1919 until 1924-1925 to Charles John Frederick Wynne. After their divorce, she went on to marry Arthur Wilson Filmer in May 1925. They had money in the family as well, and the two went on to make the purchase of Leeds shortly after their marriage, so in 1926, as I mentioned a second ago. During this time, she started a series of renovations that would bring the grandeur back to the castle. She was an heiress, and as such, luxury and party-throwing know-how were at the top of her list. She was determined to make sure that Leeds checked these boxes, and she had the funds to make it happen. While she did renovate the castle to recapture the medieval style, she also made improvements to bring it into the 20th century, like modernizing the apartments and upgrading the plumbing. She also added some things to make the property better for entertaining, such as adding a cinema, tennis courts, a squash court, a swimming pool, and more lavish gardens. Unfortunately, she and Arthur were divorced in December of 1930, However, Olive did keep possession of the castle, which only seems fair considering how much work she had put into it. Less than a year later, on November 4th, 1931, Olive married Sir Adrian William Maxwell Bailey, 6th Baronet. This is where she gains the name Lady Bailey. During the 1930s, she became a renowned hostess. Leeds Castle was the place to be. So during the week, they would live in London, but would return to Leeds on the weekends to throw extravagant parties with a long list of frequent and important flyers. She'd often host members of royalty, such as the Prince of Wales, Princess Marina, Queen Maria of Romania, and the Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlovich of Russia, as well as many others. Aside from important political players, she also hosted famous film stars like Charlie Chaplin, James Stewart, Lily Demita, and Frederick March. It wasn't all fun and games, though. During World War II, the castle would shake off the dust and jump back into the military game. During the war, the new castle served as a hospital while the Bailey family lived in the Gloriette, with parties continuing as routinely as possible. Interestingly, even soldiers from the Battle of Dunkirk retreat in 1940 were seen at the hospital. Also during the war, top secret weapons research was also carried out on the grounds of the castle. This even included emergency flame weapons. It was nearing the end of the war when Lady Bailey and Sir Bailey were divorced in 1944. Her health began declining in the 1950s and by the 1970s she was oxygen dependent and required a full-time nurse. While she gave off a small portion of the estate to her son Gawain in 1966, she wanted the actual castle and property to be made available to the public after her death. She died in 1974 and left the castle and the grounds to a charity called the Leeds Castle Foundation. The purpose of the charity was and is to preserve the castle.
Tourists have been coming in droves since 1976 to visit this amazing castle. It is estimated that over half a billion people visit each year, and in 2019, that number was 539,971 people. Leeds Castle has a lot of interesting things to see during your visit, aside from just the castle itself. One of those interesting things to experience is the maze and the grotto. The maze is made up of 2,400 yew trees and it is laid out in a square. You're able to exit that through an underground grotto full of its own interesting sights. Another interesting attraction is the Bird of Prey Center in which a variety of different species of birds are housed and on display. Some birds you can see here are owls, eagles, and even falcons. You could also play a round of mini golf that is themed to the castle and its attractions. Or, there's a playground on the site called the Knight's Stronghold. Finally, you could visit the Dog Collar Museum. The museum houses over 130 unique collars, spanning back over 500 years. The earliest in the collection is from all the way back in the late 15th century. The collection began in 1977 when the wife of the late historian John Hunt, Mrs. Gertrude Hunt, donated 60 collars. The collection has since been growing to the very large and very valuable collection that it is today. As you can see, aside from just visiting the castle and experiencing the beauty and the history of it, there is tons to do on the grounds and those of all ages could find something interesting. I obviously love castles, but when I first saw this one in particular, that's when it really clicked in my head that if I ever won the lottery or earned a very substantial amount of money, I'm definitely buying a castle. Not this one, of course, but a very castly castle, like this one. Well, that is all for today. Thank you for joining me to take a look at Leeds Castle. Hopefully you enjoyed it and learned a little something. I'll see you in my next video to hopefully learn a little something more about a little something else. I'll see you next time. No, no, I'm, no, I'm doing this. Go. No, do not come chew that. Lay down. Prince. Shh, just lay there. Come on, pony.